guys to my new video in this video I want to teach you all about object oriented programming in C++ so first of all like my video subscribe to my channel and let's start our video this object oriented programming object object oriented programming is an approach uh, or a programming pattern uh, where the programs are structured around objects rather than functions and logic. It makes the data partition into two memory areas, it means data and functions, and helps make the code flexible and modular. Ob Object-oriented programming mainly focused uh, uh, on objects that are required to be manipulated. In object-oriented programming, it can represent data as objects that have attributes and functions. Object-oriented programming model that uh, organize software design around data or object. object. Uh, it represents all data of the object, like this example, we have a car, the car has the methods and attributes. The methods, we have three functions, first get fuel, uh, four function, get fuel, set speed, get speed and drive. Attributes have the fuel and max speed now what is a class class can be defined as a blueprint of the object it is basically a collection of objects which acts as building block this is a logical method to organize data and functions in the same structure like here we have car class class that name car class and this class we have three objects car object the first car is green it represents the data of the car it's green ford mustang and gasoline the second car is red it's toyota car prius and it's an electric car third car is a blue car it's a work version. it's a golf and it's a diesel car. This is an example about the class in object oriented programming. We have a class car and we have three car objects. Now how to create a class. To create a class, we need to use the class keyword like here. I use the class, this is the keyword of uh, declaration of a class. A class contains data members, like a variable, and member functions. These member functions are used to manipulate the data members inside the class. This is the declaration of a class. It starts with keyword and the class name. I open the braces, I, I put the body of code. And at the end of uh, the program I put a semicolon here look at this example I need to calculate calculate the area of a rectangle uh, the class here has the class name is rectangle the permission label is private here and public in a private I need to put I need to declare the wide and the length and in public, I need to use the set uh, the set function. I need to, to define W and L, wide and length, and I need to calculate the area. The private part is the data member variables, and here the block in the public part is the member functions. Permission labels. Public members can accessible uh, from outside the class. Private member cannot be ac accessed uh, or viewed from outside the class. Protected members cannot be accessed from outside the class. However, they can be accessed in inherited class. We need to show the inheritance in object-oriented programming in next video. Note, if we declare members 
of a class before including any permission, a permission label, the members are considered private since it is default permission that the member of a class declared with the class keyword acquire. Look at this example. We have here public integer x and private integer y. The public is access specifier and then private access specifier also. But in public, the member are accessible. Uh, in private, the member can. It's not accessible. An object is an instance of a class. When a class is defined, no memory is allocated. But when the object is created, the memory is allocated. Data can be accessed by its functions. Look at this example. In this example, I need the name and the ID of the person. First, I need to define the class person. And I need to define the array. Uh, array name, it's a character, and the ID, it's an integer, and public void uh, a function void uh, get details. In the main function, I need to, to put the person p1. Here, person p1 is an object. Accessing a class, accessing public data number. Uh, following is an example to show how, to show you how to initialize and uh, use the public data members using the dot operator and the respective of uh, uh, respective object of class. Look at this example. Here I defined student A, student B. Uh, to initialize uh, the data member, I need to use dot. Look here, setting value of a of a object, a dot role number equal one, a dot name equal Adam. And here uh, for the value b, b dot role number equal two, b dot name equal Bella. Uh, this how to access the public data member using the dot operator. Now accessing private data member, to access the, uh, the private data member, we need to use and initialize the private, uh, the private data member, you need to create getter and setter functions to get and set the value of the data member. The setter function will uh, set the value passed as argument to the private data member and the getter function will return the value of the private data member to be used. Both getter and setter function must be defined in public. Look here, getter and setter, uh, public, get role number is the getter and we need to return to the role number and void set role number, role number equal i. This is how to use the get and set in in uh, object-oriented programming is used to access the private data member. And finally, I uh, to access, I use a dot set role, a dot get role. Now, access, uh, accessing protected data member, protected data members can be accessed directly using the dot also uh, inside the subclass of the current class for non -sub, uh, subclass we will have to follow the steps same as to access private data member like this example uh, class rectangle private integer y integer left and uh, void set integer w integer l and integer area area and the main function rectangle one rectangle two Rectangle one dot set y and let and the rectangle two dot set eight and ten. This is how to access the protect data member using dot also, and we give the value of uh, the w and f.
to calculate the area of a rectangle. Scope operator. Why we use the scope operator in object-oriented programming? We use the scope operator because uh, to access a global variable when there is a local variable with the same name. Like here in this example, we have a global variable x named x. x have two variables. And to make the difference between the first uh, x and the second x, we use the scope operator. Two, we use the scope operator to define a function outside a class, like here, class A. And I need to define a function uh, outside the class A, like here, void a scope operator function. Three, we use the scope operator to refer to a class inside another class. Uh, if a class exists inside other class, class we can use the nesting class to refer the nested class using the scope which is a resolution operator. Like here, we have class outside and I need to define the outside scope operator inside scope operator y equal 5. I refer to this class inside another class. Now the constructors. Constructor is a special, a special member function which enables an object to initialize itself when it is created. Constructors uh, have the same name as the class and may be defined inside or outside the class definition. Important characteristics of constructor are it should be defined in public section only. It has the same name as the name of the class. It is invoked automatically uh, when an object of its uh, associated class is created. And finally, constructor does not return any value. Now the declaration. Uh, to declare the function constructor, constructor function, we need to use this syntax. First of all, we need to put the class name. Public, uh, also the class name, this is the constructor, have the same name of the class, and the parameter list and the body. Look at this example. Uh, class my class public the constructor has the name my class see out hello world integer main my class my object here i need to call the constructor that has the name my class to print hello world on the screen constructor the default constructor is the constructor which doesn't take any argument it has no parameter it is also called zero argument constructor if we do not define any constructor explicitly, uh, the, co the compiler will automatically provide a default constructor implicitly. Uh, like here, this example, class constructor, public, I defined A and B, two variable, and constructor, uh, the default constructor, A take the value 10 and B take the value 20. And a teacher made a default constructor called automatically here constructor C to call this constructor and C out A and B. Now the uh, parameterized constructor, it is possible to pass arguments to constructors typ uh, typically. These arguments help uh, initialize an object when it is created. To create a parameterized uh, constructor, uh, simply add parameters uh, to it the way you, uh, you would to any other function. When you define a constructor's body, use the parameters to initialize the object. Now the destructors. Destructor is a, specific, a special function just opposite to constructor. 
ILA constructors uh, that are used for initializing an object. The structures destroy, uh, destroy or delete the object. Now let's see the important characteristics of the, the destructor in, in object-oriented programming. First of all, a destructor function also has the same name as the same class as the class, but uh, preceded by a tilde. When an object is out of scope destructor function, it is called automatically. Uh, the destructor has no argument and is not return any value. And finally, uh, there cannot be more than one uh, destructor in a class. Now, this, uh, the syntax of destructor, how to initialize a constructor. Let's see, first of all, the class name, public, class name, and parameter list, and the body. Here, this is the constructor function. And tied, class name, parameter list, function body also. This is the destructor function. This is how to uh, declare or the syntax of the destructors. The destructor and the constructor have the same name of the class. Let's see this example. Class hello world public. Here first we have the constructor hello world. Uh, constructor is called. And the destructor also tied hello world. And finally I need to use the main function to call the constructor and the uh, destructor to display the hello world on the screen this is all about constructors and destructors in object-oriented programming and c++ programming language this is inheritance the capability of a class to derive properties and characteristics from another class is called inheritance inheritance is one of the most important features of object-oriented programming. Inheritance is one of the key uh, features of object-oriented programming in C++. It allows us to create a new class or the derivative class from an ex uh, existing class or the base class, like here in this picture, derivative class from the base class. Now let's see the syntax of the inheritance. First, uh, we have a class, a derivative class name, and the access specifier, and the base class name, and the body under the braces. The class is the keyword to create a new class here. For example, class car. A derivative class, a class name, is the name of the new class, uh, which will inherit the base class and the access specifier, either or private, public or protected. Uh, if neither is uh, specified, private is taken as default. And the base class name is the name of the base class. Let's see an example. Like here, include iostream, include string, using namespace std. First, the base class is class vehicle, Public, it's a public class, a string brand, I have a brand for a car, for example, a void home, and second, we have the derivative class, the class car, it's from the, uh, the base class, base vehicle, and this is the inheritance, string model, Mercedes, and finally, the main function. Uh, car my car my car don't work and we have to uh, to output the the content on the screen the car is mercedes and finally return zero the inheritance access the various ways we can derive classes uh, are known as access modes these access modes have the following effects first public public if a derivative class is uh, declared in public mode then the members of the base class are inherited 
by the derivative class just as they are. In private, in all the members of the base class become private members in the derivative class. Protected, the public members of the base class become protected members in the derivative class. Now we need to see an example uh, about public, private, and protected. Here we have a C++ implementation to show that a derivative class doesn't inherit access to private data members. Uh, it does uh, inherit a full parent object. First, we have class A, public integer x, protected integer y, and private integer z. Class B is inherit of uh, public A. Uh, x is public. Y is protected, and Z is not accessible from B because it's private. In class C, is protected A, X is protected, and Y is protected by Z, uh, is not accessible from C because it is private. In class D, uh, it's a private, it's a private uh, class. X is private, Y is private, but Z is not accessible from D because it is uh, private. When uh, the integer is private, it's not able to access accessible uh, from all this class here. Now the below table summarized uh, above three modes and shows the access, uh, access specifier of the members of the base class and the uh, subclass when derivative is public, protected, and private mode. First, we have the base class member access specifier public. It, if it's, uh, the, the inheritance is public, public and public, it's public. Protected and public, it's protected. Private and public, it's private. When the base class is protected, protected and public is protected, protected and protected is protected, protected with private is private. And when the base class is member, uh, the class, uh, base class is private, private with public, it's uh, not accessible, it's hidden. Uh, private with protected, it's not accessible also, and private with private, it's not accessible. This is the table of the access specifier uh, of the member of the base class. Now let's see the composition. In object-oriented programming language, uh, object composition is used for, uh, for objects that have a, has a relationship with each other. Like here, we have a relationship between class B and class A. Here I use the composition. The composition is like this, like a flash. The syntax, class A, body of class A, class B, A, object A, public, B, argument list, and object A, argument list 1. And the class is given uh, above, B, use object of class A, as its data members. Uh, B is a complex class that use a simple class A. That's all about the composition and the inheritance in object-oriented programming in C++ programming language. Exercise 1. Write a C++ program to implement a class called shape with virtual member functions for calculation area and parameter. Uh, there are classes such as a circle, a rectangle, and a triangle from the shape class and over the, uh, override virtual functions accordingly. Uh, first of all, I need to, uh, to define a base class named shape. Uh, in this base class, I need to uh, define two functions, calculate area and calculate parameter. 
Next step, I need to define if derivative class named circle inheriting from shape. Uh, in this uh, class, I need to define the radius. And I need to calculate the area of the circle and the parameter of the circle. Second step, I need to define another uh, derivative class named rectangle inheriting from shape shape class I need to define the length and width and I need to calculate the the area and the parameter next I need to define another class named triangle is the derivative class uh, inheriting from shape uh, in this uh, in this class I need to define the side one side two and side three and I need to calculate the area and the parameter also. And finally, I need to go to the main function. In the main function, I need to define the circle, rectangle, and the triangle. And I need to print all the results on the screen. It mean calculate and display the area and parameter on the screen. And finally, return zero. Now let's see how to write the code and let's start with hashtag include io stream and hashtag include cmath because here I have a mathematical functions now I need to define the p P is equal to 3.14. Now let's define a base class named shape. Class shape is a, a base class. Now public. Now, virtual double calculate area equal to zero. It's a virtual member function to calculate the area. And now I need to, I need to write the virtual member function to, uh, to calculate the parameter. to zero the class shape or the base class is ended here now I need to define a derivative class named circle class circle it's a public shape a derivative class from shape now in private I need to define the, ra uh, the radius here double radius it's a private member variable to store the radius of the circle and now in public I need uh, to construct the circle class a circle double radius radius red uh, 
and now get double calculate area const overwrite it's return the area of the circle the circle is p time radius power 2 this is how to calculate uh, to calculate the uh, area of the circle Okay, this is the area of this circle. Now I need to calculate the parameter double calculate parameter. and const overwrite if return it's two time p time radius here we have calculate parameter This is the first derivative class about the circle. Now, a new derivative class about the rectangle. Class rectangle public shape. This is a derivative as inheriting from sheep now private private double land and double width this is in private now in public we have to constructor from a rectangle class and rectangle double land and double width Now let's calculate the area and double calculate area const override return and time with Here I calculate the area. Now let's calculate the parameter and double parameter const of 
right. And delete. Two time. And last with calculate per meter. Now the same uh, steps for the new uh, derivative class, class triangle. Class triangle it's public public shape. Here also is a derivative class inheriting. from shape class triangle and private double side one double side two and double side three in public, triangle double S one, double S two, and double S three sides one S one. Side two S two and side three S three. Now let's calculate the area and the parameter and first double. Calculate area const override double S equal side one plus side two plus side 3 divided by 2 here I calculate the area not the semi per meter now the area is return S time S minus side one time S minus side two time S minus side three. This is the Calculate the area. And now double calculate parameter const and overwrite.
return side one plus side two plus side three. And this is the parameter. Now let's go to the main function and integer main. Now let's create an instance of different shape, circle, rectangle, and a triangle. And let's start with circle. Circle, for example, 7.0. Here I create a circle object with a radius 7, it's a 7.0. Rectangle, rectangle, 4.2 and 8.0. It's a rectangle with a length 4.2 and with 8. And finally, triangle 4.0 4.0 also and 3.2 this is a triangle with a side side one is 4 side 2 4 and side 3 is 3.2 now let's calculate and display uh, the area and the parameter of each uh, shape see out circle out area circle dot calculate area the out parameter and circle dot calculate parameter and the same as <coughs> for the rectangle see out rectangle the out area uh, rectangle dot calculate area And parameter C out parameter it's rectangle dot calculate parameter now for the triangle C out triangle. And see out area triangle dot calculate area and see out parameter 
triangle dot calculate parameter and finally return zero this is our C++ program in object oriented programming in this program I defined uh, three shapes uh, shapes and this three shapes I calculate the area uh, and parameter of these three shapes exercise to write a program to create a class called rectangle that has private member variables for land and width uh, implement member function to calculate the rectangles area and parameters. First of all, I need to create a class. In this class, we have a private uh, private member to uh, to store the length and the width, and a public. I need to use <coughs> in public uh, a functions. First function is the function rectangle uh, to declare the the width and length and to create and calculate area function that name calculate area to calculate the area and another function calculate parameter to calculate the parameter and finally the int main the, this main function I need to call the functions that I used in a public class and I need to uh, print the, va uh, the, the value on the, uh, on the screen. Now let's see how to start our code and first include iostream using namespace std and I need to create a class, class rectangle. Private. We have double and, and double width. Now public, in public I need to use a rectangle double length and double With and with here, I defined and I declared the length and width. Uh, now I need to to create a function to calculate the area of the circle double calculate area return length time width this is a formula to calculate the area now another function to calculate the parameter uh, double calculate parameter and return to two time and time a plus width well. 
This is a formula to calculate the parameter. And the class rectangle is finished here. Now let's go to the main function and int main. Now double length and width. out enter the length cn c out enter the width cn Rectangle, rectangle, length and width. Now let's calculate and display the area of that uh, rectangle, double area equal to rectangle dot calculate area here I called uh, this function this function calculate area and see out the area is area now let's calculate and display the parameter also and double parameter equal to tangle time calculate parameter And see out the parameter is parameter. And here also I call this function calculate parameter. And finally return zero to indicate a successful com uh, completion and this is our C++ program using object oriented programming and rectangle class to calculate the rectangle area and parameter first I define the class I have a private and public in, a, in the private I define the, the, the length and wide and in public I defined I used uh, the function to function calculate area and calculate parameter to calculate the area and the parameter and in main function I define the length and y I tell the user to enter a, a value and I call the function to calculate the area and parameter three Write a program to create a class called person that has private member variables for name, age, and country. Uh, implement member function to set and get the values of these variables. First of all, I need to define the class person. In a private, I need to put the string, uh, the name, age, and country. I need to use the string in this exercise. And in public, I need to put the functions for the name, the age, and the country. I need to use the getter and uh, setter function. And finally, the main function, I need to create a person object. Uh, I need to, to set the person's uh, details using setter function. 
Next, I need to, to get and display the person details uh, using getter function. And this is our program. Now let's see how to write the code. First of all, hashtag include iostream and hashtag include string because here I need to use uh, the string. Now let's set uh, and using namespace std namespace std. Now let's create our class and class person. Uh, private string name and integer age the age is an integer and string country this is the private uh, member uh, to store the name the country and the age of the person. Now, in public, in public, first of all, uh, void set name const. string n and name equal to n this is a, a setter function to set private at uh, member variables uh, here I put the name now I need to set the age also void set age teacher a and age equal a void set country const uh, string c country equal to c here i assigned uh, i assigned uh, the the provide country to the country member variable okay this is a setter function for the country and this is a setter function for the age now uh, let's go to getter I use the setter now the getter and integer or string get name Here, getter function for uh, for retrieving the name 
and return name. Now get age. Also, this is a getter function to retrieve retrieving uh, the name, the age, and the return age, and finally get country. String get country, and this is also a function a get function to uh, retrieving the country. Uh, return country. And this is our class class person. In private, I define the name, age, and country. In public, I use the getter and setter to, uh, to set name and to get the name and the age and the country. Now let's go to the main function, integer main function. Now let's create a person object person person here I create a person object now uh, let's set the person's detail using setter function set person details using setter function person dot set um, set name for example coding real Here I set the person's name and person dot uh, set age. For example, twenty one. Now person dot uh, set country. For example, Lebanon. Now let's go to uh, get and display the person's detail. Now get and display the person details. using getter function see out name person dot uh, get name Here I print the name on the screen. Now let's print the age on the screen. See out age person dot get age. And see out country. And 
person dot get country and finally return zero and this is our C++ program using object oriented programming to create a, a class uh, person to put the private uh, member variables like the name, age, and country. First of all, I define the class, create the class. In private, I put the name, age, and country. In public, I use the function, setter and get it functions. Uh, to display uh, the name and the age and the, the country on the screen. And finally, in my integer main, I uh, create a person object and I use the set and get to display, uh, to put the person detail and display the person details using getter function. Exercise number one, write a C++ program to implement a class called circle that has private member variables for radius. Include member function to, uh, to calculate the area and circumference. In this exercise, first I need to, uh, define, uh, to, de uh, to de define the p, the p-value. Second step, I need to, cre to create the, the class circle. And I need to define the radius, calculate, calculate the, the area. Next step, I need also to, to create a, a, a public uh, class to, to calculate the area of the circle. Next step, I need to, to use the, the main function to call uh, the, the functions in the class and to print uh, to print uh, the, the area on the screen. Now let's see how to start and how to write the code. First, I need to write hashtag include iostream and hashtag include cmath uh, because uh, I need to calculate uh, the, the area. It's a mathematical formula. I need to use the mathematical formula. I write the mathematical function. Using, now using name space std now let's uh, create uh, a class class circle and open the places private we have double radius this is a private member to store the radius and uh, public circle double radius and you have radius head. No, double, calculate area. This is a function to calculate the area. And to return P time power radius and two. This is the formula to calculate the area of a circle. But here, in the first of my code, I need to define the value of the p, uh, const 
double p equal to 3.14 this is the value of p now let's continue our code and the class is uh, finished here I put a semicolon here and now let's go to the main function int main open the braces and now let's create a circle object double radius uh, see out enter the radius of the circle cn radius now circle circle radius Now let's calculate and display the area of the circle uh, double area equal to circle dot calculate area Here I called this function calculate area and now see out the area the area is and uh, double circumference now I need to calculate and display the circumference equal to circle dot calculate circ uh, conference and see out the circumference circumference and finally return zero this is our C++ program using object-oriented programming to calculate the area and the circumference of a circle using a glass circle. For today, don't forget to like my video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram. And to get the PDF course, join my Telegram channel. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you later.